This program is proudly brought to you by Sporting Bet. You saw the costume that Mel wore then uh, on Tuesday morning at Mooney Valley. Well, if American doesn't win, I think I might wear something similar. Not the same suit. Might have to get an E or an S or something like that, uh, or even CPF on the printed instead of Mel's M. Well, I'm going to stick with Pinker Pinker. I know it's one sort of out of the box, but it doesn't hurt. It'll be like going to the dogs and backing the bunny. I'm Nick Quinn, and welcome to the latest edition of Australia's newest racing show, chewing the fat. Tomorrow, the Flemington Carnival begins. Four days that will shape the spring and the 2011 racing calendar. There's nine races, four of them at Group 1 level. It's going to be huge. We're going to help you find as many winners as possible. Speaking of finding winners, our man Edward Sadler is not in a cape because Americane won last week just as he declared he would. Brie Lachlan steered you into Pinker Pinker for the Cox Plate and with Derby Day tomorrow, Edward and Natalie, my co-hosts, can hopefully find some more winners. How are you guys? Good to be with you, Nick. A uh, little bit closer to you this week than what I normally am now, on the couch. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, I just... He booted me out of my seat. I did, yeah. Can I, I fire in a protest? I... No, you can't, no. <laughs> but I... Protest dismissed. Yeah, dismissed. I'm really looking forward to this weekend. I'm especially looking forward to Derby out of all the days because I think it is the, undoubtedly the best day of racing. Have you got your outfit worked out? I might have my outfit worked out, but I'm a little bit worried about the weather, although I'm hoping the rain will hold off. What do you think? Uh, I hope the rain holds off too, Nat. I mean, look, you want it's an outdoor sport racing, so you want to have the best weather, don't you? You do, yeah. Yep. I'm not worried about the rain, more the, the wind. I hate it when the wind blows and my hair gets messed up. You don't up. have to wear a hat. Yes. Well, we're going to take a short break. He has enough gel anyway. It wouldn't matter. That's true. It just stays right there. Crisp. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a short break on chewing the fat. When we return, we're going to preview the Victorian derby, thanks to Sporting Bet. Sporting Bet is built by punters for punters, so you get the very best experience. At Sporting Bet, you can expect more from the latest in customised betting with black books, favourites and iForm. Plus, Sporting Bet covers all the exotics, including trifectas, quinellas, exactors, and first four. Bet fast online or at sbet.mobi on your mobile, anytime, anywhere. That's why there's no better bet than a Sporting Bet. Welcome back to Chewing the Fat. Let's have a look at the track at Flemington tomorrow. It's looking pretty good. The rail's true for the entire circuit and a dead four track. Uh, rain is forecast as well, which is bad news for me. Yes, you don't want your hair to get wet. Uh, no, that. it's not good. Race six is the Group 1 Amy Victoria Derby for three-year-olds over 2,500 metres and a cool 1.5 million up for grabs in this one. Manawanui was very impressive at the Valley last week and is the ruling favourite. Can he be beaten? Let's have a look at the market. Starting off with Manawanui at $2.35 a favourite, followed by the Geelong Classic winner in Juna at $5.00. The Gay Waterhouse trained Niagara at $8.50, Sangster at $12, Saybridge at $13, Collar at $15, Perfect Punch $17, Zabillionaire $19 and $21 or better the rest. Well, look, Nick, I, really, I think Manu he's obviously the best horse in the race. He's just got that class factor about him. But, I mean, as we saw last week in the Cox Plate with Helmet, they might be the best horse in the race, but if they don't get the trip, it doesn't matter how good they are. Um, other horses, looking Juno was obviously very impressive in the Geelong Classic and 
I think he'll be perfectly suited by the 2,500. Niagara was terribly unlucky at Caulfield and got going when it was all over. Sangster, I thought in that race, hit the front a little bit early. He was left a sitting shot in Saybridge. Uh, I think he's the horse that's really flown under the radar. He won the Norman Robertson the most years at it mean he'd be more prominent in the markets. I don't think you can make any comparison between Manawanui this week and Helmet last week. I think there was huge doubts over Helmet last week. A lot of good judges were potting him with Manawanui. It just does, doesn't really seem a doubt over whether he'll relish the extra distance. I think he'll win. I think he'll win easily. I think our job now is to try and find a few for the multiples for the so, trifectas and so Quinellas. So who are your multiples? Well, I thought... Uh, as just touched on, uh, Niagara was very unlucky at Caulfield last start. The only winner out of the horse getting beaten probably was, uh, you know, Gay Waterhouse, the trainer's son, Tom Waterhouse, who's a bookmaker, <laughs> and the horse was spectacularly backed that day. I've got him running second. What about you, Nat? You got a winner for us? Um, I've chosen Manawanui for this one. I don't think you can look past that horse. I think it's He's been good. a horse that you've stuck with right, the, right yeah, through the spring, has. right from the first episode of two. He's done the right thing by me, so I'm backing him. Yeah, I like it. A bit of loyalty. Yes. And we caught up through the week with the connections of the two favourites, Ron Lehman, trainer of Manawanui, and Paul Snowden, representative of Dahi, with Induna. Uh, you must be thrilled with the way he's, uh, he's gone in the spring. Is there any uh, sense that he's um, uh, going to improve even more? Well, I'm always hoping for some improvement, but I've got him as fit as I have have ever had had. So he's no, no other stage in his career has he been this fit. And what about uh, the, the distance? That seems to be the only... Well, that's a question mark, I think, on all, all these um, young horses here at this stage, because um, none of them have been over the distance. It's the first time. Um, I feel the horse will, my horse will settle, and I hope they will make sure he gets the journey then. Paul, on the Derby Saturday, you ran in Duna. Must have been happy with his performance at Geelong last time. Yeah, we were, Edward. Um, he's come through the run very well. And um, hopefully that form can hold us in good stead for, for the derby on Saturday. I think the step up to 2,500 will suit him? No problem. Uh, he certainly ran out a good 2,100 when he won his maiden at Gosford and, and he certainly ran the 2,200 at the Geelong uh, Classic Day right out and run through the line really well. So it gives us a lot of confidence looking forward to Saturday. And you can see lots more great interviews from Breakfast with the Stars in full at www.victorianstellions.tv forward slash news. So make sure you check those out. All right, guys, let's recap our selections. We'll start off. So I'm choosing Manawanui. Um, I don't think he can be beaten. I think Manawanui will win, but I do think he can be beaten. Right, OK, that's a Who little bye? bit ridiculous. <laughs> well, look, I think, I think he will win, but I don't think he's a certainty. I think there's... Other horses in the race, you know, the Derby's always a race where it's a fairly open um, race, and I think he's, look, you don't, none of these horses have raced over 2,500 metres before, so you don't know if they're going to get the trip, and I think there's others in Duna, Sabre, Sangster. I like um, Duna. That I think that can, Niagara's another one that can beat. If, look, it's horse racing, as you know, Nick. Horses have off days, just like you and I have <laughs> our off days. Um, anything can happen. I don't think he's a certainty. I think there's others on the program who are concession better? Do you, when you have a bet, do you bet concession? No, I don't. No, I only use that when I go to the movies to get cheaper tickets. Oh. Well, what do you think, Nick? I think he does bet concession. No, be a tip. <laughs> <laughs> I think Manawanui will win with a leg in the air. OK. All right. Uh, are you going to like wear any special suits or sing us a song or do something if Manawanui doesn't win? For we'll the... get to that. We'll get to that. Sing us a song. Sing That'd be good. Thing. Have okay. you got any requests? Um, I like Simply the Best. Thank you, I am. But what would you like me to sing? <laughs> All right. Race four is the group one. Coolmore Stud Stakes over 1,200 metres. Oozing Class with Sepoy and the International Visitor, Bear Hero from Hong Kong. Let's have a look at a market thanks to Sporting Bet. Starting off with Sepoy at $1.30, Hot Snitzel at $10, Fox Wedge $11, Bear Hero and Masthead sitting at $17 and $34 or better the rest. Off oh, air, Natalie, you were saying that you were quite keen on uh, Bear Hero here. Why? Was I? Yeah. I was <laughs> That's hilarious, that one. <clears throat> So I hear like three. Let will be professional now. now. Look, Seafoy's one of the best three-year-olds I've ever seen. He's something special to be able to beat. I mean, he beat top sprinters when he won the Manicato. Um, I really rate Midsummer Music and Kurtana, the two 
uh, Peter Moody made to run later on in the day in the Salinger. Look, he was just cruising along and they were hard at it in the race at Caulfield. Seapoy will win um, very easily and look, I think he's one of the better things for the day and he's probably one of the best. He is the best three-year-old in Australia and he's probably the best three-year-old I've seen. I think the scary thing for all of Seapoy's rivals this Saturday is as impressive as he's been the last two wins this campaign, this is his grand final. This is the race they've been aiming him for. And you saw what he did at Mooney Valley. You saw what he did last start at Caulfield. To think he's got a lot of improvement on that, when the, the big boss, the Sheikh Mohammed's in town, mm. he'll win. There's he'll only win well. one little doubt for me. No, no, there's not. Okay, no, okay. no, no, no. I'm sick. Fine. I'm sick of you pouring water on. I'm all bullish about this. No, we things. need to hear the bad side. No, Tell no, us no, what no, no. Nick, Nick Quinn's not interested. I'm not interested. So. No, no, no. Okay, but Sepoy's won nine from ten starts. Yeah, no. look, he had excuses the day he lost. The only issue, Nick, I don't know what your thoughts are, but he's win the Dane Hill. Um, wasn't as impressive as his other victories have been this campaign. I wonder whether um, that had anything to do with racing up the straight. I think he had a lot up his sleeve. Uh, and I, I, so I just think he'll win on Saturday. I think it'll be great to see him. What about you, Nav? You got a winner for the punters? Um, I think Sepoy as well is the ah, one to beat. So we're all agreeing. This, we is, are. Nice. this is unique, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We'll have to argue about something else. Yeah. I definitely think Sepoy. OK, now, you caught up with David Ferraris and Paul Snowden, is that right? Yeah, uh, David Ferraris, obviously, trainer of Bear Hero, coming all the way from Hong Kong just for this race. And, of course, Paul Snowden with Sepoy. You've, of course, got Bear Hero. Uh, he's a lightly raced three-year-old here for the Coolmore. Um, he's got a terrific record down the straight. Is that sort of one of the reasons why you brought him out here? Uh, yes, it is, because it's a six furlong straight, and the second would be the fast Hans he's been running in Hong Kong, so he'd be, um, he'd be up to the task. How long have you had this race in mind with him? Oh, we've had it for a good few months. Um, you know, when he's running those good fast times, then we thought it would be a good, um, a good race for him, because Hong Kong doesn't accommodate three-year-olds. The main horse that he takes on is Sepoy, what do you make of him? Yeah, well, he's obviously a tremendously good horse. Uh, I think on paper he'd be the one to beat because strictly on handicapping we were about 20 odd pounds out of the weight so uh, it's not going to be an easy task but you know we'll you know he's a good horse and I think he's worth a go. Star horse Seapoy runs in the Coolmore how's he come through he's easy win at Caulfield? Yeah super he's he's there now it's just a, a you know, thing of maintaining his fitness and keeping him there up to the mark so he's in great order the horse and we couldn't be more happy with him. That just seemed like a barrier trial was prize money there. Yeah, it seemed a bit that way, and um, you know we overcome a few uh, obstacles to win. But you know, it's the way that he won it. You know, he carried the weight and uh, beat the old horse again. So it's 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 good, all good for him. Okay, so we've all agreed on Sepoy, but is there someone we can throw in there for the multiples? I like Fox Wedge's work uh, behind Sister Madly. Uh, at breakfast with the stars at Flemington on Tuesday morning, I thought he worked really well. Mm -hmm. um, be a hero. Look, they're not going to have brought him all the way from Hong Kong. Targeted this race just for the heck of it. You know, it's too much money. Um, the other one for the multiples, I think, too, is Nick Quinn to be searching for the Phillies through multiple marquees on Saturday. Ah, so he, I like that. He, nice was just war he was just warming up at Caulfield and then hit another level Mooney Valley and he, he's at his peak now, I think. Is he? OK, right. Well, don't peak too but just early. Be, just be careful if you're around him. Yeah, yeah. He's like a... Let's, yeah, I want Cut to... Cut it out, you yeah. Slytherers. All right, I think Masthead can run a good race. I thought it was impressive last start, and I'll probably have Masthead to run second behind the all-conquering Sepoy. OK. What about you? What have you got for second? Um, look, I haven't, I haven't gone with anyone. I can only think of Sepoy at this stage, so I'm not sure. I think I might just have a straight-up win on Sepoy. Mm. No trifectas. In OK, this one. fair All right, enough. let's take a break. You're watching Chewing the Fat, thanks to Sporting Bet. Sporting Bet is built by punters for punters so you get the very best experience. At Sporting Bet you can expect more from the latest in customised betting with black books, favourites and iForm. Plus Sporting Bet covers all the exotics including trifectas, quinellas, exactors and first four. Bet fast online or at sbet.mobi on your mobile anytime, anywhere. That's why there's no better bet than a Sporting Bet.
Welcome back to Chewing the Fat. Race five is the Group 1 Long Jeans McKinnon Stakes over 2,000 metres. Let's have a look at the market. Starting off with Rekindled Interest, who is the favourite at $3.80, followed by Southern Speed at $5.50, Glass Harmonium at $7, Forteller at $8.00, Midas Touch and Efficient at $10, Lights of Heaven and Wall Street at $12 and $14 or better the rest. What do you think? I think it's throwing me Edward Bean next to me. I said I'm used to him being oh, over is there. Is that why you're a bit subdued? Just, today, just, Nick? Just have little... I put you off your oh, game? Today? I'm a little bit thrown. I normally have the I'm girls next that to me. Just to please Nick. Yeah, Look. Nick's getting all oh, upset can't about believe it. You say that. Wow. All right. He is. He's, uh... <laughs> Look, he's, I think he's quite upset today. No, that's yeah, all right. I'll plough on. And I will be ploughing on by finding a winner here with rekindled interest. Was a moral beaten in last Saturday's Cox Plate. Demolition Derby. Yeah, Demolition Derby. Uh, I think would be great for connections to win a race like this because he's had a good campaign. And, be... and he, he, look, he deserves a group one. Absolutely. You're spot on. I don't um, often agree with you, but I do here. <laughs> <laughs> look, he does. He deserves a group one. Yep. I mean, he has, and he has beaten group one horses in the races that he has won. So, look, I think he should have won the Cox Plate, I think, um, and I think he should win on Saturday. Southern Speed, you can't take anything away from her. Her form this spring has been terrific, and, you know, you would never ignore a Caulfield Cup winner in a race like this. Glass Harmonium, the different track of Flemington, being away at the 2000 by the river side of the course there at Flemington, I think that'll help him. I think the crowd... He's one of those sort of European horses that um, I don't think handles noise or the crowd. Jeez, wasn't he fired up before the oh. cops yeah, played? And, but even I, I didn't. I wasn't at Mooney Valley last week. I was just watching it on telly. But even looking at him in the mounting yard, he just appeared to be to me to be towy the whole day, the whole time. Like yourself. Yeah, that's a different story. Yeah, but there'll, uh, be, there'll be 110,000 people there tomorrow, though. You no, no, can't be, say... hey, look, as you know, I mean, you've been to Mooney Valley many times. You know what the Cox Plate day is like and where they start right in front of the crowd. I just don't think that suited him. I think, um, as Damien Oliver will show this in a moment, I, as Damien Oliver mentioned, where they start at Flemington for the 2000 um, with a decent distance away from the crowd will suit him. And look, Efficient gets out to Flemington. He loves the track. Um, Lights of Heaven's back to better form, but to be honest, I can't go past rekindled interest. What about yourself? Okay, Nancy? I'm going with Glass Harmonium. I think with Damien Oliver on board and his home track of Flemington, I think he will um, he will be the winner. Beautiful. Natalie's tipped Damien Oliver to ride the winner here. Let's yep. have a look at what Damien and trainer Peter Moody had to say about their chances. You also ride Glass Harmonium and the McKinnon. Uh, what went wrong? Was it just a case of he was too toey in the barriers on Saturday? He actually wasn't too bad himself. He was probably upset by a, a few others more so than, than him. And, um, um, you know, he took the blindfold off and um, then Wall Street got out the back. So that sort of caused a bit of a delay and uh, he was just caught on the back foot. So we're hoping at the 2,000 metre start at Flemington, it's over the other side of the track there, away from the crowd compared to Mooney Valley where it's right in front of the grandstand there that uh, was just a one-off and uh, we'll get him right for Saturday. Lights of Heaven have returned to form last time. Yeah, uh, some resemblance of what we know she has got. She's done very well uh, since that run, so uh, uh, it's a race we've sort of targeted for the last sort of six weeks since we've taken our foot off the pedal towards the Cups and uh, she goes into this in the best form of the spring. Um, you know, I would have loved to have had her in the Cups, but I think she's just too immature to cope with that, so... Uh, Hopefully we can find a nice little uh, prize here on Saturday. All right, so let's recap our selections for this one. Nick, who have you gone with? Gone with Rekindled Interest. I've gone with Glass Harmonium. Nick and I obviously have something going on here today because we've tipped the same horses for every race so far. And again, this will happen. Rekindled Interest for me. OK, and anybody else you think might get up there? I think the Kiwi Wall Street will run a cheeky race at Big Odds. It was very impressive last start. Race as well at Flemington where he won the Emirates Stakes last year. So I think Wall Street can run a cheeky race. I'm going to go efficient. Me um, too. I like efficient too. I, look, he loves Flemington uh, and the 2000 will suit him. I mean, same distance obviously as last week, but I think he'll be better suited by Flemington. Um, I think if he's going to figure in this spring, he'll have to run very well tomorrow. Okay. All right. I'm going to back Quinella. Race seven is the Group 1 Maya Classic over 1,600 metres and Wowzers, there are some good horses in, in this race. Pretty amazing. So let's have a look at the market, starting off with More Joyous, who's at $2.40, followed by Moshin at $5.50. We've got Response at $10. Majestic Music, Hurtle Myrtle and Verena Miss at $15. 
Sacred Choice and Yose at $17 and Dysphonia at $19, $21 or better the rest. Look, I think that's one great thing about Australian racing at the moment, Nick, is that, I mean, our stayers, as has been well documented, aren't uh, as good as overseas stayers, but I think our mares have been very strong, as we saw last week with Pinker Pinker winning, um, and our sprinters are terrific. More joy, she's the second best mare going around. She might not be as good as she once was, as uh, Nash said after her win at Caulfield last time, um, but look, I think she should win this. Moshine, though, with the way the weights are set up, she gets in really well. Um, terrific win in the manifold, two starts back here at Flemington. Uh, and, you know, Atlantic Jewel's something special, isn't she? So would have been hard for her to run uh, Atlantic Jewel down. Response is going well, she's another one. And Dysphonia is one I think I like at odds. Um, terrific work the other day at Flemington Breakfast with the Stars and look, my best Ruffy for the day is Dysphonia. Jeez, OK, well... Uh... Might be your best ruffie. Oh, if, if you like it as an each-way basis, the best you're going to hope for is running a place, I think, because more Joyce will be winning. She's a superstar. <laughs> she did what she had to last start and... Uh, I think she was lucky to win, to be honest. What, how was she lucky to win? Look, I, I think Sister Madley should have won the race. Oh, because Daddy trains. No, oh. because, <laughs> because you know I'm professional. Yeah, show. she ran it down. She pulled the whole way, Sister Madley, and she was wide the whole trip. If she wasn't wide and if she didn't pull, I think Sister Madly wins the race. Well, not the first time you can, I won't make a not pulling joke, but that's ridiculous. Oh, I don't know. I oh. thought, wow. I thought that more joy. That is poor form. <laughs> Even by your own standards, that's like no, you've got to get one the, the worst calls you've made on the show. I, I, I don't think you can take anything away from more I'm not joyous. taking anything. I'm you just, just said she was lucky. I'm, okay, I, you too. <laughs> I am got sticking with Edward and I like Moshina as well. Well, Jeez. break it up at once. This is what happens when we're too close to the friction. Yeah, yeah I'm sitting there next week. Okay, Bye. Edward, you had an interview with um, Andrew Noblet and Paul Snowden. Yep, spoke to both of them through the week about their chances uh, leading in the, into this terrific mare's race on Saturday. You've got Sistine Angel in the mire. Uh, she's coming off a seventh behind Moore Joyce in the Tristark. What did you make of that performance? Uh, I thought it was a, not a bad run. She got back and... Uh, Got in between runners, which she doesn't really appreciate. So uh, it wasn't bad. It was um, an even run. Um, I'm pretty happy with her going back to Flemington and the mile. And of course, you mentioned going back to Flemington. She ran a terrific race in the Gulga last time she went to Fle Flemington. Yeah, sure did. And um, you know, it's probably bigger track, and she gets a bit more room there. So uh, really happy going back there. The mile is suited down to the ground, and she's been trained on really well since. And does Fanny runs in the Maya Classic for the mares? Are we happy with the way she worked with Seapoy? Outstanding. She's every run she's had. She's um, improved off the back of it, and been more than happy with her, the whole preparation. So the mole definitely. She's looking forward to it, and um, it's just going to be really interesting to see how she measures up to uh, some good, you know, mares like more joyous and co. Okay, boys. Let's recap our selections calmly for this one. Touch grabs. No, I think you get a little bit agitated then when I. Uh, <laughs> no. I'm just stating my case, Nick. All right. Well, despite Edward potting more Joyce's impressive win last start, I think more Joyce will win and win well. I think more Joyce will win. Oh, yes. Um, look, she's a top <laughs> mare. I gave her a rap. I said she's the second best mare in Australia. Behind right, Sister Madley. I'm no, I think she is better than Sister Madley, <laughs> but I'm just saying, I think given the circumstances of Caulfield Cup Day and the way that race was run, I think she was lucky to win and not finish second. OK, boys, let's recap our selections calmly. More joyous. More joyous. More joyous. There we go. Is that better? That, you know, I feel we're like we're at therapy or something. I know, yes. Saying it I know, but I like Moshine as well. So I'm oh, look, she'll run a terrific race, definitely. Yep. Viewers, Natalie gave us a stern warning in the break about just calming down and yes, getting a bit yes. over the top. So that's why everyone... Keep a lid on it. All right, let's take a break. You're watching Chewing the Fat, thanks to Sporting Bet. Sporting Bet is built by punters for punters so you get the very best experience. At Sporting Bet you can expect more from the latest in customised betting with black books, favourites and iForm. Plus, Sporting Bet covers all the exotics including trifectas, quinellas, exactas and first four. Bet fast online or at sbet.mobi on your mobile anytime, anywhere. That's why there's no better bet than a Sporting Bet. Ostbrokers Bloodstock. For horse owners, by horse owners. With all the answers to protect your investment, Ostbrokers work for you to provide the right cover and the best value. 
And most importantly, they're in your corner when you make a claim. Ausbroker's business is built around relationships. That's why our clients have been with us for so long. Horses are not just our business, they're our life. Why not talk to one of our team today? Call us on 029570 or go to our website, bloodstockinsurance.com.au. Ausbroker's, young faces, years of experience. Welcome back to Chewing the Fat. Great support card on Saturday, including the race that will shape the Melbourne Cup, the Lexus. Boys, what do you think of this one? Terrific race, isn't it, Nick? Um, look, Tavamore, the only issue with him, I think, three Saturdays in a row, but his last two runs have been really good. Green Moon, obviously, coming off a second in the Caulfield Cup. And then if Tavamore does win, backing up again on Tuesday. Yeah, that's the mm. thing, isn't it? I mean, four runs in the space of two weeks, it's... It query, isn't it? I mean, he was terrific last start behind your horse, American, though. He was, but how often can you keep going back to the well? That's the issue for me. Um, Midnight Martini spoke to Mark Kavanagh early in the week, and you can get that interview on the Victorian Stallions website. Um, and he was, you know, she's obviously followed a similar sort of path to the cup, hopefully, to the cup for her anyway. As shocking did two years ago, of course, we all know how it ended up for shocking. Um, and she's got very similar form lines to this horse, so look for her to run a big race. Um, but look, my tip look, I'm going to go actually with Midnight Martina. I've changed my mind at the last moment, but I'm going to go with her ahead of Talamore. Yeah, it's uncanny because I'm all over Midnight Martini. I thought she was a good thing beaten at Caulfield last start when just couldn't get clear running. I think she'll win on Saturday, and she's currently 200 to 1 for the Melbourne Cup. So really? if you like her Saturday, have $10 each way on a Saturday and have $2 each way for the cup because if she well, wins, she'll one, be about 20 bucks. One wow. market I'd love to have actually is if I would say she'd be the best of all the Australian horses, she'll be the um, best for the cup, I'd have to say. Is she good in the wet? Uh, I question without notice. I don't have a wet track for oh, me. Oh, hello. Me. <laughs> it doesn't have the answer. Oh, jeez. That was too intelligent a question for you. Okay. Is, is she good? Can you you were doing. As, uh, I've been taught never ask a question you don't know the answer to. But that's so. why it's a question. All right. Yes, she is good in the wet, actually. She well, is good in the wet. I would give you some information. Um, and I like Green Moon as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Can't knock Green Moon. Good no, second. No, Green Moon's good. There'll be square up for that there. Go on. Doing the bat, <laughs> caught up with Flemington track watcher Warren Huntley, and here's what he had to say. Warren, terrific morning here at Flemington, head of the big four days next week. Uh, what caught your eye here from a derby perspective, first of all? We had Niagara, Saybridge and Sangster all gallop. Yeah, I, I thought they all worked really well. To, to me, I thought the work of Sangster and Sabraj was really good. Uh, they worked together and finished off really strongly. Uh, Niagara, the Gay Waterhouse trained horse, worked with the stable mate older than time. And, and he worked nicely too. He's pushed out the last little bit and worked really strongly. Um, you know, of that, and, and taking a, a line through their last run, I thought Sangster was probably, you know, found himself in the front a little bit too early in that race and uh, ridden a bit more patiently. And the way he worked this morning, um, if anything's going to trouble Manawanui, he might be one of the ones that can. And you know, if Manawanui settles well enough and runs the trip out, he's probably just got too much class for them. But of the of the Derby horses on the course proper this morning, probably Sangster slightly slightly ahead for me, ahead of um, Sabraj and, and Niagara. Uh, other horses that worked on the course proper this morning. We had Sepoy, of course, worked with Stable Mate and worked down the straight, just f taking off from about the 800 metre mark. And the last bit of his work was terrific. Um, you know, he's going to start a short price favourite in the Coolmore on Saturday, and it's hard to see him getting beaten, but he seems to have come on well or at least held his condition since his win against the older horses at Caulfield. So, no knock on Sepoy at all. It'll be great to see him on, on Saturday. And a little jump out just then with um, a horse I'm sure you know quite well, Edward Sister Madley, just showing her natural sort of good pace down the straight and running good time and finishing off strongly. Uh, she goes to the Group 2 Salinger. I know the challenge is to try and win a Group 1 with her, but if you run one in a Group 1 sprint over the Spring Carnival, you've got to take on Black Caviar, and that's probably not good advice if you want to win. So uh, I think Sister Madley looks really well placed going down the straight in the Salinger, and she was terrific going down the straight this morning with Fox Wedge, Shopaholic, and Adamantium just behind her. Didn't mind the run of Fox Wedge in that either. No, look, he's um, he's going to go to the Coolmore, and, and he poked up nicely the last little bit, just got a little bit back off the pace, but worked home nicely. And look, he's, you know, he's a known entity. He's a really good horse. He's had a look at the straight now. And um, and he's been competitive with Sepoy. So if there's a horse that is going to test him, um, Fock, which certainly went down the straight well this morning. And, you know, he will should cope with that well under race conditions on Saturday. 
There are plenty of other big races on Saturday, no more so than the return of superstar filly Atlantic Jewel as she contests the wakeful. We also chat to Edward Sire, John Sadler, about his chances with Sister Madley down the straight. Start off in the wakeful stakes, your star filly Atlantic Jewel runs. Yeah, she's running in the wakeful. Um, she's done pretty well since her last run and uh, yeah, you know, she went worked really nice this morning. Do you have to pinch yourself just how good she's been? Yeah, well I have to pinch myself because each run we've given her, uh, she's just improved and she's continued to improve and she's trained on beautiful since a thousand guineas. John's sister madly runs in the Savinger Stakes here on Saturday. What did you make of her work this morning? Yeah, no, she worked well. She's, you know, obviously a good galloper and um, she was, you know, her own worst enemy. She always works too well and and uh, therefore, and also race day gets out and, and pulls too hard. Um, if we could get her over that little problem of wanting to run through the bridle, I think we'd uh, we'd have a serious Group One horse on our hands. But in saying that, that's that's been um, that's been a little problem with her right throughout her career. So, um, but look, if she if she runs to a best form, uh, she's going to be terribly hard to beat. She's well weighted. Um, very good jockey on board. Um, just got to walk across the road. So um, I think she's got a great chance. Okay, down to the business end. Let's have a look at everyone's uh, best bets and best roughies for the day. Starting with Nick, you've gone with your best bet as Manawanui. Why did you choose that? Oh, I think Manawanui won ultra impressively at Mooney Valley last start, and I think he's clearly the one to beat in tomorrow's derby. Okay, Edward, you've gone with Atlantic Jewel. She's just the standout in the race. She is the best horse in it, and she will win it easily. Gone right. out there on a limit, the dollar twenty-six for the punter. I have. It's a tough call, isn't it? Nick? <laughs> okay, and I've gone with Galar in race one because I think this horse is a champion, and I love the way it races. It comes around the bend and then just takes over all the other horses on the straight. So mm, I like when the horses come around the bend. It does yeah, so. you're hilarious, Nick. <laughs> OK, let's have a look at our best roughies. Starting off with Nick, you've gone with race eight, number 13, Rarified. That's correct. Right, why? Well, I thought it was it was backed off the map last start when resuming from a spell up in Sydney. I thought it hit the line really nicely that day. was as fat as a house, looked fantastic at Flemington the other day. $13 currently, bet and bet big. Bang. OK, Edward, you went with race seven, number eight, Dysphonia. Yeah, her work at Flemington uh, at Breakfast with the Stars was terrific, Net. Um, and look, I think uh, she. I think she's a very good chance in that race. I think more Joyce is the best horse in it, but I think apart from her fairly even lot of mares, I think she can run a very good race. Okay, good one. All right, and I've gone with race five, number fourteen, Lights of Heaven, because I think um, it had a great race last start. And Peter Moody has said that he's figured this horse out now, and it's all all uphill from here. Do you, her runs before that concern you though? Not at all. So, just, no, <laughs> not at all. Do they concern well, you, Nick? They do. They are of great concern. She was initially favourite for the Cox Plate and the Caulfield Cups and was bitterly disappointed. So I'm slightly surprised by your value. Well, Nick, out. on Saturday, the joke will be on you. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think when you want to have a wager here, the two of you, the likes so. of heaven in the... Okay, the seriously, let's... let's right. okay. I'll give you $3. You're going to no, have as much as you want on. But it just has to place. Because it's a roughie. Concession betting. You're following Edward. No, it's in. a roughie. All right, all right. Place. Okay, so if it doesn't place, I have to. No, this is terrible. What What am I going to do? No, there's a few things I can suggest, but this is a family <laughs> program, so we will just move on. Okay. Yeah. No. Look, we'll, we'll come up with a with an idea a little bit later. All right. A quick break, and we're back to wrap up things with your emails and don't forget to follow us on Facebook Chewing the Fat Racing and also Twitter Chewing the Fat Oz. You're watching Chewing the Fat thanks to Sporting Bet. Sporting Bet is built by punters for punters so you get the very best experience. At Sporting Bet you can expect more from the latest in customised betting with black books, favourites and iForm. Plus, Sporting Bet covers all the exotics, including trifectas, quinellas, exactas, and first four. Bet fast online or at sbet.mobi on your mobile, anytime, anywhere. That's why there's no better bet than a Sporting Bet.
don't forget, for all the latest markets, go to Sporting Bet. And while you're there, download their iPhone app. It's seriously awesome. I have it. I know. Um, I like Richie Callender's line actually last week on TV. And what did he say? He said they teach you three things at kinder. First thing's how to count to 10. Second thing's how to what the alphabet is. And the third thing's how to download the Sporting Bet uh, iPhone. It's that easy. <laughs> it, is, it is very easy. I, and I think that's the sort of education you got, Nick, at Kinder, wasn't it? Well, yeah, it's a it bit was. harsh, because I think those that were on Sporting Bet last weekend could have snapped up a hey, who will pick the winner of the Cox Plate market, if I recall correctly. They could have. Yes, Edward Sadler was $1.65. <laughs> you declared it like backing the bunny at the Greyhounds. I was a bit too confident, wasn't I? Mm, you certainly were. But I'm sure we could come up with a few times. He's Ooh. been a little bit confident. Oh, he has. He's confident all the time. Wowzers. He sticks his neck out on the chopping block yep. every time. Yeah. If he stepped his hair on the chopping block every time, he'd be bald by next week's episode. He would be too, but it'd grow back pretty quickly. It's a nice thick head of hair there. It is. Now, of course, <laughs> Nat, we've got the Chewing the Fat Melbourne Cup special. Uh, on Monday, one of the two things you got to do the day before the Cup, well, three things actually, take the day off work, go to the Melbourne Cup Parade and watch our Chewing the Fat special. Now, we've sorted out your bet about Lights of Heaven. Mm -hmm. We're going to have, of course, the Cup is the race where heroes are made, isn't it, Nick? Mm -hmm. Heroes win the yeah. Cup. So you're going to be Wonder Woman if Lights of Heaven does not run a place. Okay, on that's no, no, I think we up the ante. I think we up the ante that it doesn't win. I mean, no, she went for it as her best rap. Yeah, but, but, but if she doesn't win, because we'll get more, more people will watch it we are not, a Wonder Woman I did it. not back my Ruffy for a win. It is a place, and I will dress as Wonder Woman if and it does if a place. the horse does run a place, you're in the Superman outfit. You've got yep. like refer the full Monday. Superman outfit. Mm, I don't know. I think I'm getting the short end of the straw here, but I'll, I'll play on because I'm a team player. Yeah, mm. and you're pretty confident in stocking a win, aren't you? I am. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's have a look at some emails. Have mm. you guys got emails there to read? I have. I've got a nice one, actually, to start the ball rolling. I'll read the first one, and then if I get potted, I'll read out another one at the end. OK. Hi, team. Do you think any Australian horses have a chance of running the first four in this year's Melbourne Cup? from Andrew Willis from South Australia. Well, Andrew, I don't think we should completely write off the Australians. I think there's one horse that's currently $151 called Older Than Time from the Gay Waterhouse Barn, who I think can run a big race. And as Edward and I touched on, Midnight Martini, should she get a start in the race, I think can run a big race. You're obviously very patriotic there, Nick. I don't, well, I just think it's the cup. You can't, it's not like other races that sometimes appear straight up and down. Every year there's a horse that runs a drum at big odds and I'd love to see a few Australian horses run well. Hmm. Nat, what do you got for us? Okay, I've got one here. Dear Nick, Nat and Edward, Chewing the Fat is my favourite show and today is my last day at work and it would make my day if you could read this out, okay? It will be the second most fun I've had at work today. And I'd Christian, like to know what the most fun he has at work today. What do you think it? he did? Who was it from? Christian from Frankston wrote that one in, so that was very nice. What do you think he did to have so much fun? Oh, I don't know, we'll have to... Uh, reply to that email. Yeah, what was the first fun thing you did? Yeah, no, what, what would be your guess? I don't know. I think he got new stationery. <laughs> On his last day. Um, okay, I've <laughs> got one job. here from Adam from Hamilton, a very disgruntled Adam. He says, Dear team at Chewing the Fat, very disappointed with last week's episode. I gave up my time to do a special interview at Breakfast with the Stars at Mooney Valley, even though, as you know, Nick, when you're working at those Breakfast with the Stars gigs, they're pretty hectic mornings, aren't they? Mm. So Adam gave up his time. He even tipped the winner of the Cox Plate, Pinker Pinker, um, declared his love for Natalie, uh, but still the interview wasn't played. He had all these mates around and everything there to show him on TV. Because there was and a And he didn't piece. get that opportunity, and he's not going to be watching Chewing the Fat again <laughs> in protest. Ah. Was that the same Adam from Hamilton that took Natalie to Fiji? He did not it was. take he, Fiji. I mean, you would have thought. Oh, just, oh my he God. takes her to Fiji. Oh, he spent and, 10 large. And what, I mean, she doesn't take him to Tasmania. Ooh. And <laughs> the interview doesn't get played, mm. so I, well, think, I think Adam's got reason to be disgruntled. If I wear the Wonder Woman suit next week, it'll be for you, Adam, so make Ooh. sure you tune in. Not that I will be wearing it, because my horse is going to win. Now, a big Melbourne Cup preview show online Monday morning, as Edward said before. We'll have the latest news on the Internationals' final gallops at Werribee and uh, the reactions from Saturday night's Melbourne Cup barrier draw, so make sure you tune in for that one. The other, the other thing too, Nick, just... Of course, if you can, do get the opportunity, go to Flemington on Saturday. It's one of the best days racing. Well, it is the best days racing mm. you'll go to. But if you're out of town a bit, 
terrific weekend with country racing. Um, meetings everywhere in every country town. Great day, so I'm calling it a couple, so you might spot me up uh, one of them. Um, come and say hello if you do. And, yeah, uh, make sure you do get to the races this weekend because if you don't go this weekend, you never will. It's not often that I agree with you, Edward, but you're spot on. If you're not doing anything this weekend, get to Flemington, get to the country races, just make sure you're at the track. We've had a lot of fun on chewing the fat today. Hopefully we've helped find you a few winners for the weekend, but we're gonna leave you now with some footage from the Melbourne Cup launch and have a look at some of the living legends. Racegoers purchased 52,335 hats. I don't quite know how we counted that, but that's a lot of hats when you think about it. This program is proudly brought to you by Sporting Bet. This has been a Thorough Media production.